Hello, Stage 32, and thank you so much for tuning in for how to market yourself as a film composer. And this is an amazing live I'm going to be doing with a long, long time Stage 32 member and Trinidad and Tobago based composer Navid Lancaster. I am so thrilled to have him joining us today. And I have to say, if you guys are tuning in and you're like, I'm not a film composer, no worries. A lot of the information that Navid is going to be sharing with us today about how to market yourself as a film composer is really applicable to anyone in entertainment. If you're an actor, I'm an actor myself and a writer, and I have to say a lot of the stuff in Navid's blog is incredibly helpful no matter what hat you wear creatively in entertainment. So thank you so much for tuning in. My name is Taylor C. Baker. I am the Director of Content and Branding here at Stage 32. And I am thrilled to be joined today by Naveed Lancaster. He's gonna be getting on here any second to talk about how to market yourself in entertainment. A lot of us are creatives on the side of things with entertainment and we really like to focus on the craft and getting centered with our music and getting centered with our performance and that is amazing and when you get to set, bring it. But you also need to know how to market yourself and how the business side of things go on. So I'm very, very excited to have Naveed with us today to talk about his blog, How to Market Yourself as a Film Composer. He'll be joining us any minute now. Thank you again for tuning in. And if you guys are not familiar with Stage 32, we are the world's largest online platform for connecting and educating film, TV, and digital creatives worldwide. And I've got Naveed right. So welcome, Naveed. He is gonna be tuning in today from Trinidad and Tobago. Hello, Naveed. Hi, how are you doing? I'm wonderful. Thank you so much for joining us today. Yes, unfortunately, we we're not uh, as sunny as we are. It's actually rainy, rainy outside. So oh. we're just slightly rainy trend out in Tobago. Oh, well, it is actually a very sunny Austin, Texas here. Very hot fall day here in Austin. I'm wearing long sleeves, willing actual fall weather to start happening. Well, thank you again so much for joining us. Again, for you guys just now joining, my name is Taylor C. Baker. I am the Director of Content and Branding at Stage 32. We are the world's largest online platform for connecting and educating film, TV, and digital creatives and professionals worldwide. And I am thrilled today to be joined by Naveed Lancaster. He is a film composer and sound designer based in Trinidad and Tobago. And he wrote an amazing blog for us called How to Market Yourself as a Film Composer. It's actually part two of a three-part blog series that Navid is sharing some amazing tips and tricks about film composing. And again, if you guys tuned in at the beginning, this is applicable really to anyone in entertainment. So stay tuned. But first of all, Navid, I would love to hear, you have been a member of Stage 32 for a very long time. Please tell us a little bit about your experience being a member and some of the things you, you love doing on Stage 32. I've seen uh, since my time then, since 2011. Oh, by the way, let me backtrack a little bit. Um, sure. for, for those who, who don't know the Trini accent, I'm going to speak a little slower. <laughs> <laughs> um, I've been a member since 2011. Wow. And I've seen uh, amazing growth. Uh, through uh, through those years. Uh, now, my involvement in Stage 32 was more of a watcher and an observer while I was building my own uh, resume, you could say. Uh, and it's only until last year uh, when uh, one, of, one of my tactics, by the way, uh, which I will share before I continue, is that when I go to a website, I look to see who are the head honchos. I try to connect with them. Always, that's the first thing. So I, I saw Arby uh, mm -hmm. and I saw Amanda. Uh, so I made contact with Amanda and she told me that it so happens that Stage 32 and some members of the team were coming down to do a training session in Trinidad and Tobago. So I knew about it before they announced it um, down here. Yeah, so that, that's another advantage of meeting the head honchos and conversing with them. They sometimes tell you stuff uh, uh, that you could prepare beforehand. So when they came to Trinidad, uh, 
members of the film community here were quite shocked that they actually knew me. Uh, so much so that when uh, I introduced myself, uh, Amanda was telling Arby, that's the guy I was telling you about. Yeah. So, yeah, it was quite amazing. Uh, and as a, as a success story, that actually led to what we're doing right now, because it's from um, meeting RB, meeting Am Amanda, training under them, learning some of the tricks of the trade uh, in terms of various aspects of, of, of the business of, of film. I made a few other contacts, then met you, right? Uh, yeah. And mm -hmm. then you mm -hmm. asked about the blog series, and that's how I started. And that led, of course, to, to this. So this interview that we're having right now. So uh, as you can tell people who are watching, it is great to network because it brings up your net worth. Ooh, yeah. I've never heard that statement. And I talk about networking a lot because it is the foundation of Stage 32. I am so glad to hear you say that. When I've been with Stage 32, coming up um, as a employee, I'm coming up on my year anniversary and I'm very excited. And shortly uh, before I was hired, and then RV were just raving about having just been in Trinidad and Tobago um, for a festival there. So I just missed it. And then this year, of course, everything kind of festival wise went away. But alas, we get to connect in fun new ways like this. Right. That's right. Technology it, is hold. So we could so we could have this nice conversation. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. So the technology keeps going going forward. Age 32. We have 650,000 members worldwide. You can join for free at stage32.com. We have actors, film composers, writers, hair and makeup artists, and costume designers. No matter what you do or where you live in the world, there is a place for you to network and make amazing connections like Naveed on Stage 32. So Naveed, you have written two blogs for us now. We're going to be releasing the third in a couple of weeks. Um, yeah. But today we're going to specifically talk about how to market yourself as a film composer. Right. And for those of you who haven't seen his blog, once we're done here, be sure to follow us on Stage 32 online on Instagram. And in our stories, we've got the whole blog. You can swipe up and see the article. So he's just going to cover some of the, the intrigue of what he covers. But what are some, I know I have some of mine. What are some of your favorite highlights and, of the blog and how to market yourself? as a film composer? Well, marketing for me, it's very easy. It's not a narcissistic venture as some people might think it is, uh, or some people might feel that it's not for them. Mm -hmm. It's for everybody, especially in this day and age where the opportunity due to the pandemic, people who you may not normally meet are usually home. So yeah. for me, marketing is like a bright light in a dark room saying, me, me, look at me, look what I'm doing, see my worth. Yeah. So I, 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 that's what I do. I, make, I put myself in situations where I can be seen. And of course, with that, as I said in the, in the article, uh, it's one thing to put yourself out there, but you also have to have, especially for a composer, a wide range and varied range of music that yeah, yeah. You, have, you know so where if a person um a director filmmaker producer or even a fellow composer says okay let me hear this person's work because he's been making he or she has been making so much noise you know in their marketing let's see what they have you better have some stuff sure. to back that up yeah. you know uh, i have i have been to situations where slightly outside the blog uh, but still dealing with marketing, that people would come to me and say, they're, they're this producer, they're that producer. When you go on their, their website, if they have a website, or you go on their social media, you don't see anything, hardly anything that pertains to what they profess. Mm -hmm. So yeah, so that does not make sense to me. That's an instant write-off for me. Uh, one of the, 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 the subjects I talk about in a blog is having something called consistency in your posting that yeah. for example yeah. I'll, I'll use instagram uh, as an example because we are we are on instagram live uh yeah so <laughs> <laughs> so if anybody goes to my profile 
Daca get a very good idea. Throughout the years, I have had my profile since 2014, if I remember clearly. You'll see a consistency. Mm -hmm. Everything is either music or music related. Yes, guaranteed there'll be one or two posts where I'm doing something that is not music related. But basically, everything else is music, like me meaning that I am producing something or mm -hmm. I'm talking about something or giving advice about something related to music, uh, the film industry, or sound design, or all three, depending on the post. Sure. So sure. that will give a, a, a viewer a very good idea of who I am how serious I am, what I do for a living, and my worth. One of the things, that's a great, that's such a great point. And one of the things I particularly love in what you were saying about writing about consist or posting consistently is you say don't don't do the whole fake it till you make it. Like don't like pretend you're off, you know, starring in a feature film if you've never even been to an acting class, you know, because there's especially in entertainment, sometimes people lean into the fake it till you make it. And that is typically going to end poorly. Um, right. One example I can say that is the opposite of that is I know, um, oh man, what's her face? She's so famous. There's a really famous actress who lied about her age because she wasn't going to be able to be in a, a, in a show because mm -hmm. she was too young to be in the role or something. And that ended up working out really well for her. But that's not like pretending that you can't do something that you're you're selling. So. I love that you say, when you post consistently, be authentic. And a big right. part of what you say is share your struggles. Like a lot of times on social media and when you're trying to promote yourself is any hat in, in, in entertainment. I saw somebody, hey oh, thanks for tuning in. I saw someone said they're a screenwriter. That's amazing. All these tips we're gonna be talking about today are applicable to anyone in entertainment. But we all have those days, whether you're a screenwriter, a film composer, an actor, where it's not great. You, you struggled with something, you had a woe, share that. Be authentic and be transparent. Like your social media feed doesn't need to be this curated, beautiful picture of what you think it's supposed to look like. And you, you shared in your article uh, specifically to share your struggles. And I thought that was a really, really poignant message because a lot of people I think get misinterpreted that it needs to be a perfect feed of, of everything going great all the time. I agree. It's, it's, a, it's a way of, for want of a better word, humanizing the, the person to realize all these, comp for, for composers, actors, screenwriters, or directors, anybody in the, in, in the entertainment industry, especially, I, I bring this up again, during this extra, extraordinary time that we're in any pandemic, um, that we all we were going through various series or levels of struggles, you know, whether, I, whether to get jobs, to get certain roles, whether to get something, a product out. It's basically the struggles are across the board. So share them because they will have people who would be in a similar situation or they'll be going to a situation where that unfortunate incident may happen and they can give advice to either mitigate or um, to avoid it altogether. Yeah, absolutely. So what are some other tools in your marketing tool belt you could share? Uh, okay, well, I'll, I'll expand on, on one which I said a little bit on the blog, but it's happening right now. Uh, for the past week, uh, the, in the animation industry, it has something called View Conference uh, going on in Italy. Of course, it's a trend to be go over there's Italy, so it's a fantastic time difference. Usually the, <laughs> usually right, the, the right. sessions start at, for in trend that time, 3 a.m. So I'm usually up at 3 a.m. watching these. Wow, what wow. Yeah. It, if, you, if you want to market yourself, you have to market yourself. <laughs> so That's the, the, the great thing about it is, is that even though it's animation, I'm a musician, I'm a composer. So naturally, my talents will be needed. The presenters there, since most of them, well, all of them are basically home, um, they're presenting from home and they're presenting live. It's all live stream. So what I do, I see who they are. So like, for example, uh, they have, I, can't, I don't want to call their names, but they have certain people of heads of the animation industry, some huge animation companies. 
So I yeah. watch their talk. I find where they're on LinkedIn, which I'll talk about a, 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 a little bit on LinkedIn, as, about LinkedIn as well. And I, as soon as they finish their talk, I message them saying, thank you for the talk. Uh, a little bit about what the talk was about so they knew I actually watched it, you know, and then I just let it go and tell them, have a great day. I don't ask for a job. I don't do anything like that. You just tell them that they're doing great work, have a great day. And of course, since I'm from Trinidad and Tobago, I tell them, of course, I'm from Trinidad and Tobago because we are still seen as exotic. I have to play the card. <laughs> so. Totally, totally. You can Level playing ground, people, and if, I love that so much. Uh, so, like, even after our, our interview, it still has conference uh, stuff going back. So, I'm uh, straight from here. I'm going back into marketing again. And the nice thing about it is, as I explained in the blog, it's basically a numbers game. Some people will respond, some will not. The ones who respond, yeah. you start to work uh, a relation, a relationship with them. And for, you know, anything that, that happens, like this interview, for example, the blogs I wrote for Stage 32, or any other aspect of what I'm, I'm doing work-wise uh, or creatively, I share that with them. So they see that I'm not just a guy that says, thank you for watching their, their, their show. They actually see me doing stuff. So that, again, it, everything adds to worth and perceived worth. Because as I said in the beginning, it's one thing to say that you are such and such, but you have to have stuff to back it up. Yeah. Well, yeah. and you make a point in like the very opening of your blog, you make a point that I love that I think far too many people in the entertainment industry just glaze over. And you said that the tips that you give in the blog are for building a long term career. Because right. if you want to succeed, and that doesn't necessarily mean, you know, like walking down the red carpet at the Oscars one day, but like have a real career and connections and entertainment, it's not going to happen overnight. It's going to take years. And like you said, those seeds that you're planting and those people, that's brilliant, by the way, the way you're approaching that and how you're being so personalized about it. And very often in networking situations, people tend to go in and be like, this is me. I can help you. You can help me because you're more successful and I need your help because you need my music. And mm -hmm. it, it comes off really like jarring to the person you're trying to do. But network, network I, I feel like we should all just toss the word networking out and say friendships or communicating. Like, let's just call it something else so it's less in, scary. You know, people are people and even no matter what level of success they are, they just want to be talked to like a person. And they appreciate that you took the time to watch their talk and to give honest feedback and compliments or whatever you have to say and not be like, ask, ask, ask. So I think that's a really brilliant strategy. And I, I, like I said, I think you're setting yourself up for the long term. And, you know, someone that you may have made this connection with might in two years be like, oh, wait, who was that amazing film composer from Trinidad and Tobago? Because that's like your nugget that people are going to remember you by. And then you're going to get a job. But very often people just are like, oh, well, I didn't get a job right away. It's a failure false. It's a long-term thing. You're, you're planting the seed. I think that's such, such a brilliant way to approach that. And it's like, uh, I, I also do a lot of reading. Uh, I ha it has this guy called Alex Banyan. He wrote a brilliant book called The Third Door. And to me, marketing is like this. Uh, you, you go to a club and the club has a line by the door that goes all the way around the block. That is 99.9% .9 of the people who, for example, they connect, they try to connect to a, a filmmaker or a producer and say, just like what you said, I could help you, you could help me because you're more successful. That is mm -hmm. instant no, with outside that door forever. Then it has the rich percent that goes, that knows the bouncer and goes through. What I do, I do the third door, which is, you go, go down, you, you leave the line, you go down the back alley, you look for a window to get any climbing. Yeah, that's my, my method. That's very, and, and that's good. how I have talked, I've given the metaphor very often about how, I won't say Hollywood per se, but the entertainment industry is like a giant castle. And this castle has a moat with the most ver like ferocious alligators that are also infused with like 
dinosaurs and they're like monstrous alligators guarding this castle. And there's no doors or walls or windows. There's nothing. So the only way you can get in is to go into the enchanted forest and find the right tree that you're supposed to knock on and like find the underground tunnel. And what that's ultimately through, we'll call it communication now, not networking. And that's a very similar thing. And your intent going in says so much, you know, like that reeking of that desperation is going to even get the tree trunk closed, you know? So that's, that's such great advice. Um, you had also mentioned earlier about the whole inception of this was you were saying you're based in Trinidad and Tobago and you're watching these animation seminars that are happening in Italy, which is a crazy time difference. You know, I'm here in Austin, Texas talking to you, which is so amazing. What sort of tools and things have you used in addition to stage 32 to stay connected and, and work internationally in that regard in the film industry? One of them, one of my main tools is LinkedIn, um, mainly because but it's a business platform. Mm -hmm. And as I said in, in the blog, uh, composers and maybe other people in, in the entertainment industry, but uh, in that blog, I was tweaking to composers because I don't think personally that they realize the importance of LinkedIn. It's a business forum. Once you go through LinkedIn, uh, people will take you a little more seriously because you're going through that platform. Right? And, and for anybody else who's watching, Stage 32 is also on LinkedIn, hint, hint. Uh, and you go there and the movers and the shakers of the entertainment industry, most of them have LinkedIn accounts. Uh, I had also mentioned in the blog how I wanted ways you could find out if the LinkedIn account is, is bogus as well. Uh, uh -huh. And one of the ways you could find out that is simply looking at the recommendation section uh, where people can give or send recommendations. Usually if you see that, then you know the person, if it's not verified by LinkedIn, uh, you would know if that person is actually who they, the profile says they are. And then you go back to the same procedure. You connect with them, you say something in the message, and then you just back off. You know, and it has it has worked for me because a few people have responded, and we're in, we're in communication. I know nothing major has happened yet, right? But they're seeing my stuff. They're responding with either a thumbs up or an actual statement, and the statements I like more than just the thumbs up because it shows they actually read it, thought about it, and said something, which is even better. So you actually have this form of communication going on, and then from there, things may happen absolutely yeah. and that's a great tip and also again for those of you who are not members of stage 32 we're a free platform and we have been referred to by forbes magazine as linkedin meets linda for entertainment networking so we have a specific network of people working in entertainment both on the craft and the business side of things so you can connect with people right on there you can send them dms um messages and what have you so be sure to do that and i also wanted to note especially because you have a relationship with our founder and ceo richard rv Bado. um yeah, he's, he's trouble, awesome <laughs> yes he's so awesome uh he founded stage 32 about 10 years ago now you know in his own vision he was feeling the same thing we all feel he was struggling making connections and making things happen in his entertainment career. So he created a platform that made it easier for us all to do that worldwide. And he has also written a book about networking and crowdsourcing called Crowds, uh, Crowdsourcing Indie Film and the Power of the Crowd. So be sure to check that out. The audiobook is for free on Amazon. So you can listen to that. And he, if you're having any sort of trouble because the bad word we call it networking can be an issue, be sure to check his book out. It has so many helpful tips on how to approach networking from the master of networking. So I highly recommend you check that out and join stage 32 and just start nosing around the amazing web. We have webinars on networking, so many resources on how to expand your entertainment career. Well, Naveed, you have been an absolute pleasure and an absolute treasure trove of information on how to authentically connect with people and get ahead in the entertainment industry. Um, 
one final thing, you have a third installment of your blog coming out. What can our viewers expect to see from that? What will you be talking about? This one is dealing with health, uh, which of course is important across the board for everybody. Yes. Um, so I'll be dealing with uh, the major topics of physical, emotional, and mental health, especially during this time. Um, this was brought about by uh, myself blogging on other forums and the people there, some were, were, had health issues and they were asking about certain things. So I, I give you know, answers the best I can uh, because of course I am me and I have, you know, I have my health and you have yours and everybody have a different health situation. Sure. But dealing with, dealing with your health issues uh, in this particular time where most of us have to stay home uh, brings particular challenges. So yeah, yeah. So, uh, so I'll be writing about that. That is amazing. And I think it's really easy to, in any sort of creative endeavor to get a little lost in what you're doing. And I have never done this, but I've heard people like will get so in depth in their work that they forget to eat. I'm a big fan of eating, so that doesn't happen to me. But in general, I think sometimes people get a little down the rabbit hole and they need that reminder of like, take care of yourself, take a break, you know, do the social media. As a composer, as a composer, uh, we're all at fault of that. Uh, when I was younger, uh, we used to take pride in going into the recording studio and not coming back out for about three days. It, it was brutal. Yeah. yeah. It, it's because we, we're just in there creating. Yeah. Yeah. My husband's a musician and he sometimes does that where he's just like in the studio or he just like plays, like gets lost in it. And I, I admire that, but you also got to make sure you take care of yourself. Uh, well, Naveed, thank you so very much for joining us today. If you missed his blogs or are look for, looking forward to any of his new blogs, check it out on stage32.com slash blog. If you are not a member of Stage 32, we are the world's largest online platform for connecting and educating film, TV, and digital creatives and professionals worldwide. And you can create a free profile at stage32.com and start networking today. Naveed, thank you so much for joining us. If you guys missed it, I'm gonna post it as an IGTV, so be sure to check that out. Naveed, you have an awesome day down there. I hope the sun comes out and turn it in. Oh yes, <laughs> it will. <laughs> thank you so much for joining us. I will talk to you soon. Yes. Thank you so much. You'll take yeah. care. You too. Bye -bye. Thanks. Bye. Bye-bye.